Okay, welcome everybody to the 3 p.m. meeting, Board of Trustees Property Subcommittee meeting today, Tuesday, March 21st. Um, we have two major topics to uh, deal with and get moving forward. Number one is the uh, horticulture building, uh, the selection of an OPM, owner's project manager. We have uh, received two proposals, and um, somebody will need to correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I just was meeting with Tim. We got one from Schoolhouse. And what's the other one, Crystal? ACG group? ACG, correct. Okay, schoolhouse is out of Western Mass somewhere. They have a 413 area code. The V's out of the Catskill in New York area, but the local rep, rep is the Berkshire. Okay, and where's ACG group based out of? New Bedford. New Bedford. Okay, so um, you, one of you or both you, bring us up to date on the status of the selection of who you would recommend moving forward with? Um, we had interviewed both companies and Schoolhouse um, said they could meet our not to exceed limit of 125,000. Um, they talked about their oversight, which, which was which was a good amount. Um, and then we interviewed AC G Group, which had extensive oversight, but they're double the amount. They can't, they could just do an OPM for the 225, but if they do the their clerk of the works, would be here every day of the construction. That's another 125,000. And Crystal, you checked with the AGC's office, and we don't need to have the full time clerk. Correct. Okay. So as long as we get the oversight that's required, and also the design team has a level of oversight they need to provide. So I have no issue not having a full-time clerk of the works on the project. Um, do, you, do we go back to ACG and say, hey, take out the full-time clerk of the works and see what they say, or do we try to start moving forward? Um, we could just move forward and go with Schoolhouse, I would say. I mean, they both had good oversight. I, I, I just, the other one, it was double the money. That's what, that's what I well as time is of the essence I'd like I would hope we could groundbreak April 2024 for the the new facility and we'll be hard pressed to do that and that will get the OPM on board and we still got to hire a design team and get you know con contract documents out to bid and you know that's going to take four months minimum maybe even a half a year. Um, all right, so um, I'll make a motion. can we, sure, Mr. Kalen. I make a motion to hire a schoolhouse as part of the OPM company for our school project. Okay. Second. Second. Third. All in favor? Aye. All right. So when it comes down to voting, who's the voting? This is really been official vote. Okay. All right. Okay. So you'll start the process. I'll send um, all the necessary paperwork to Ethan and Homer tomorrow morning. I'll send it out to the trustees, just in that format, and get the Okay. Great. Can I just highlight a couple? Sure. We're by going this with the schoolhouse. Uh, I just took some notes. I was part of that particular interview, and, and Tim and Chris will correct me if I wrote this, some things down, but the. The essence of timeline, I, and I want to share this with both instructors as well, uh, a couple of notes that they made known. Um, some of the electrical supplies or equipment that they need for the project, uh, some other projects that they're working on right now as OPMs is a 62-62 week wait time for some of the equipment. So uh, as soon as we get this finalized and put orders in, we're looking at upwards of a year just for some of the material. Uh, they made note that the design phase, uh, they're finding a six to seven month design phase is a tight window. I would hope, you know, that we've, how many months have we gone through the, 
to feasibility study, and depending on how the design firm plays out, and you know, we'll see if we can tighten up that timeline a little bit. Uh, they're looking at overall a 30-month proposed, proposed timeline as being rational from start to finish. Um, so the point is, I think we internally have to begin talking about what this looks like probably for two school years would be my my assumption if I'm doing my math correctly. So I mean Tim and Chris, please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what they were kind of talking about during the interview. Uh, I, I just want to, reality was sitting in when I was listening to 62 weeks. Garage doors, overhead doors, what was the wait time for the garage doors? It was 40 to 50 weeks for garage doors. You want windows in the garage door? Add more time. Yeah. Um, so All right. that's the reality that we're we're facing. Okay. Um, so based on their experience on projects they're currently doing, this is what they're offering up. Let's hope things start to change. And the bottom line is we we need to move forward. We got to get moving forward. Okay. So we've made that decision, and we're going to get the paperwork in order and uh, get the next process going. So we have to start conversations with them. Now, what about, um, Crystal, do we start talking to city procurement and getting the RFS, RFP, RFQ, whatever you wish to call it out for design services? Uh, we absolutely can. Um, but I should we have the schoolhouse on board? Well, can we make the initial call and saying, well, all right, we're moving Absolutely. forward with this OPM. This is what we're thinking. Yes. We need to get this out as quickly as possible. Um, I'm sure they have experience in doing this. Did that come up in the interview process that how would you help us selecting the design firm? Um, they did. Yes. They did have experience by it. Okay. Is this in part of all this? You were talking about maybe putting a mobile classroom or over here. Is that something we're still looking at, or I think we have to talk about what the options are. Okay. The mobile classroom, or you know, right now to advocate for <coughs> Mark and James. I mean, you're surviving because we have a partial building still standing. Correct. Once that building comes down, it's going to be a nightmare. I'll be honest. <laughs> So the longer that can stay there, if, if you just listen to what you just said, you know, that's like the last, because we know how quickly they can take it down, um, that would be super helpful. But that could still mean like a year or a year and a half of ha having been displaced, right? Well, yeah, we, we resigned ourselves during construction, but right. we could kind of until just now figured all of next school year would be construction and hopefully fall of for some point in 24, we'd move in. <clears throat> we're well, obviously going to reprogram that right thought now. this afternoon. Um, so staying with what we have, and it's not necessarily just us, it's, it's our students. You know, students collectively relate to that structure in a way, but they get to mingle with each other. You know, at some point when we'll be physically separate, there's a lot of continuity things that are just not going to happen that be problematic for students not well I mean for me too but students should be kind of our focus so, so we will need something whether it's so I mean I guess so we don't want to look at maybe co-sharing a classroom in uh, health tech that front, that front classroom I mean that's going to be a substantial amount of money for a year you but you're need two bills I go back to the, where James just sort of based out of right now over deal yeah. that become the hub of horticulture like you're talking about sort of that central hub. Yeah. Is it that shop is the hub? And then maybe the classroom that we have when both of you are teaching related, we need a second space. Because I don't want to like belabor all the little details, but some major things for kids is like lockers. They, they have, you know, a lot of gear they're issued that needs to be stored somewhere. Last year we stored it on desktops where we were staying. That won't work. Um, for the long haul. I mean, that kit wall. I know Dave widely uses some of that space as well. But and he, yeah, he's, <laughs> I feel bad because we're, we're taking a lot, we would be taking a lot of his space, maybe there's some ideas that come out of that, but those, those are just little things, so like the longer we can stay with that, I think the better. We need to have some internal, I think yeah. some meetings internally right. to talk about how that yeah. plays out. 
uh, I would agree with you. We need to get the ball rolling at yeah. a higher level with the OPM, get them up. Well, forward. hearing what uh, Dr. Lincoln Hooker just shared about the timeline, you know, my, my vision of April 2024 groundbreaking doesn't sound realistic. And to do groundbreaking in, say, September in the fall as winter conditions are coming on board drives the cost of construction. So we're probably talking groundbreaking spring of uh, 2025. And, uh, you know, that may be the reality. So, um, but yeah, all these little things need to be shaken out. And that's a good point, um, James, about the lockers, you know, the student students don't have a place for their stuff that creates turmoil I can imagine yeah. I mean the, the current structure we have I feel bad for you because I know you're like I'd like to see it gone um, but when I ask about maintain there's a couple of things like the space kids use inside right now to do hardscape with Mark it's attached to a classroom it's attached to their lockers there's restrooms there's a greenhouse we can't recreate that anywhere else until we have a new structure. So that's why I just say that, yeah. and we can talk about more later. I guess it's closer. The longer that can stay together, the better it is for students. Right. Okay. All right. Let's uh, sorry. Move, move on. Um, okay. I'm sorry. Um, so Schoolhouse, the um, gentleman has been very persistent with wondering what what the status of this was, and I just emailed them telling them um, that. Property subcommittee has voted to move forward with them, um, and how quickly we can move to, uh, to work with the next steps. I just talked to him about the contract okay. as well, and he's he's been very responsive to emails from Cheryl Allen. All right. Before the end of this meeting. Could you please keep me in the loop with this? I like to be intimately involved with the process as an observer. Um, okay. Thank you. Um, then our our next major issue is the uh, proper term well we got the animal science building uh, the old GCC building moving forward and hoping to have that online for classroom space after uh, April break um, the canine grooming and kennel area uh, which is going to the pig barn space, which is scheduled to be demoed April break, and then what happens with the animals then? Pigs will be gone. Pigs will be gone. gone. Move the rabbit somewhere else. The classroom goes down below to the GCC, so the building will be empty. Okay, and then so then we've had uh, some schematic and, and renderings of what potentially we would do there and. Uh, now you have a new player in the mix um, that you seem very uh, comfortable with or, or like what they have to say and have been very responsive in offering up suggestions and renderings um, at no cost at this point, correct? So where do we wish to go with this to wish to engage? with Wiles architectural firm or whatever the name of the full company is and start moving forward um, do we have to get them out of purchase order so technically if they're under if any art uh, designer is under 30,000 we can just we can just go out and hire them we don't have to do a whole process um, what I like about George's company is he's well he says he can have plans for us in mid late May so the building comes down we could we could be back in the ground within a month or a month and a half. I um, think we can still keep that timeline. Um, and so if we did it that way, I would hire him as the architect. I would hire an electrical engineer and an HPC engineer on our own that work with him. In the so you wouldn't they wouldn't bring together the mechanical as with the HVAC and electrical. You would right bring in somebody else. Yeah. And well, that would probably. And that way, keep keep us within the thirty thousand dollar threshold, also, right? You definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, so sure. There is also the company that we started that did the feasibility study for us in the, in the basic uh, floor plan. I mean, if you want, we could we could have them both both companies come in and give a pitch, see what they say, or we could just bypass that. I'm I'm deferring to 
you and if Crystal were you involved with that um, for your 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 recommendation plain and simple I, I would like to go with Wiles George and I, I still got to get some information from this first company and what I've seen from here and, and when Andy also showed me some renderings on, on the computer um, I'm I'm very impressed and they have a lot of experience doing these facilities and nothing like this is real fancy or anything but they they uh, they have the expertise and if they can get you stuff quickly and you can get working on it this summer right. and the goal would be to have at least a, a structure up by return to school yep. have it enclosed and, and then electrical plumbing kids can go rough it in and from there. Giles, what do you think of that timeline? It can happen. It can happen. Okay. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> I make a motion again. Make a motion, Mr. Kangling. And, uh, to hire Wiles. Or <coughs> just make a motion. Recommendation. The recommendation as far as it has to be approved by the trustees for recommendation. Okay. All right. We got the two major things. Moving forward, it's excellent. Uh, the third one was animal science building over at GCC, which is coming together. Big Burn, you got associated all on board for demo in April, right? Yep. Um, okay. So all this other stuff on the agenda are yes, important, but not nearly as important as these two major projects but we need to keep uh, everything on our radar to keep moving forward in the right direction uh, we got the, the forestry property up at the VA which is an equipment storage area at the time due to the fact of uh, we've been our hands have been our hoisting has been cut off in a sense by the state regulators we got all that beautiful equipment just sitting out there. Uh, Bird's Pit, you've come to done what you could there for that time. Oh, we got the cornerstones on board to get started at the. Yep, they came. A couple of guys came in yesterday and we're going over the, what they had for plans and scope of work, checking out the building. I thought they're going to be back today, but hopefully tomorrow, start bringing their stuff in. Okay. And the uh, window project, are we all done with that? We're all done. We're going to walk around Friday and make up a punch list, punch list if there is anything. I, if we have any money left over, I'm going to see if I can get some new uh, replacement screens, put them on the shelf. So you'll walk around with R&R &R window? Uh, and Roy Brown. So, oh, he was, he he was the, the design yep. uh, official for it. Okay. Um, this Friday, it would be the punch list. And then um, the AC and C buildings have been awarded to BG, BG Mechanical. It's all, paperwork's all in order, ready to. The documents were sent to Dr. Lincoln Helper today, so I'm sure you'll get those. those the trustees will receive those, and then the contract will be done. Okay. Tim's working with Huntley on the sidewalk project that was uh, capital improvement money we got from the city past uh, solicitations. We need to still uh, work out some details. Yep. I keep stopping. I'm like, so he was doing some of the site work, and then I, you know, go down and do these sore lines because we need we need to fix the sore lines in the farm area. And then somewhere in there, I said, well, go go get me elevations for down by the greenhouse if we want to put a storage building there. Um, just get that all on a plan for me. So. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, the chip activated doors, all that's been purchased yes, so and in the works? We are waiting. Um, we're meeting with them on May 2nd to walk around with Jim and Josh to designate the doors um, so we can get this project rolling in the summer. Okay, so that we this summer. Correct. And so when opening a school in September, we'll have 
the system in place? Correct. All right, rolling right along here. Uh, fiscal year 24 capital improvement projects. Um, so we had the approval of two more hoods. So it has not been officially approved yet. Okay. So we're still, um, the city council meeting was on thir last Thursday. Um, Tim and I sat in on that meeting um, looking to see if there was any questions. Um, this was new. We've never had to do this, but um, Mayor Chiara did ask for us to sit in. Okay. Um, no questions. So now it must go another to the next city council meeting for them to vote. And what do they do? Meet monthly or every two weeks? Two weeks. All right. So good. So things are moving right. along. And then our other <coughs> favorite subject: the Smith Farm Fields slash where people walk their dogs. Um, there's been some discussion on how do we handle this, and uh, we don't have any answers to date yet. We've had some feedback from the community. Uh, Christine Peterson um, presented us with some suggestions, and uh, I just want to keep that on our on our radar and get this. What were they? Mr. Yes, certainly. Lots of signs. I know we're all we're not, we're not a reading right now. Uh, problem up there. And yeah. Somebody got bitten and uh, brought it to our attention. And again. a broken leg. Bro yeah. And uh, so, I mean, again, liability uh, is a, has always been our, our issue in regards to, uh, you know, at some point, it went falls in our lap. Now, I know Barbara Hobson uh, talked about another meeting, Tim. Yes. Is that on their calendar or not? I haven't talked to Barbara in a while, so. Okay, so she uh, sent a backup letter because that person sent the letter to her, making her aware of it. And she said in her reply that she was going to sit with us again in regards to, because the Commonwealth of Massachusetts said, said, we're just the overseer or trustee of that property, uh, but it belongs to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So it goes back to them being on the hook. Uh, as well, but when somebody files a lawsuit, it's all the deep pockets and everybody gets named. So uh, I just want to have it on the record uh, that, that we're discussing it, we're aware of it, and uh, we will, yeah, and then uh, on the voice of counsel, uh, we, we will take proper uh, steps. But I think it's on, the, on whether it falls on the city's uh, attorney, uh, being that they take care of our property as well as the city's property, in Barbara Hobson. So and who's Barbara Hobson? She is the, she's the lady that's been in charge for years of the uh, assignment of the property of the Han Birch Pit. And what state agency? MDAR. MDAR? Yeah. MDAR? Massachusetts Department, Department, Department of Agriculture, right? Okay. Yep. Right All right, and then um, in terms of signage, um, I'll probably I'll swing by and take a look, and maybe we need to be more visible of uh, better signage in multiple locations saying you're using this facility at your own risk, some way to help protect ourselves a so more. So just the reality and the experience, the history, is when you put a sign up that really directs people or, or confronts them that way, that sign disappears pretty fast. We can't, can't read it anyway. So, but we can do it. Well, we do it and we make a record of it and say, hey, look, we've done our due diligence. You know, what more can we do? You know, the, the city's already indicated the police department's going to be hands off on it. They're not policing well, the property. The previous, the previous mayors, that was his, uh, the way he addressed it. We have not had a meeting to my that I'm aware of with this current mayor in regard okay, to that point. issue. And I think, I think mm -hmm. it needs to be addressed again. Okay. So uh, we can go ahead and get yes, Barbara, let's, let's get Barbara start Hobson, the mayor. Start that conversation. <laughs> okay. um, just lost my train of thought. Oh, and then, uh, you know, some years back, um, Judith, Judith Fine kind of took control of the 
the dog walking community and was their spokesperson and maybe we need to get somewhat that resurrected in some way some somebody maybe Christina would would take part in that seeing she's very familiar I think the meeting that we're discussing with the mayor and Barbara invite you to it too and see where, yeah. where she stands right at that all right we need we need to start um, we've oh. been talking about this loosely for some time we need to start moving it forward in a more active manner I'll, I'll work on that project. Okay. All right. Thank you. I don't know. I think we've pretty well covered everything. Anybody got any comments? Anything to bring up? Any more on the drainage? Um, no. That's, um, I did not get, it. I haven't followed up with the city myself. Um, Tim indicated that they've been doing some. some um, they were doing some um, elevation stuff. Some they got surveying. some rocks out on the on the uh, light pole over there. So they haven't done anything, but I think they're just getting ready. In that paddock apple storage part of here? Yeah, that's Cornerstone. That's Cornerstone. Yeah, that's Cornerstone. That's in the works. I didn't, I didn't understand. Okay, that's all starting to move forward. Great. Everything's moved out into the storage containers. Okay. And um, got a lot going on. Good, Mr. Kaling. Tim, all set? I'm set. I do have one question as far as like the VA forestry building. As far as electricity goes, does anyone have any kind of inkling like maybe September there might be electricity or is that like so far this, off? The company I had hired to kind of give us a plan to get it up there is, is Huntley. Okay. And as much as I keep asking for it, I, I've really been focusing on that okay. right now. But I will push him, turn him around tonight. All right. Thank, thanks, James, for bringing that back into focus. It's more just for us to kind of think about. Would, it, would a future. generator help? Well, there's a, <laughs> there's a couple things, but it's like we're kind of stymied with being able to service equipment. You know, like we're, we're putting stuff there and the tensions to kind of work out of there, but without, I think, electricity, that's kind of, well, so a generator would help. Yeah, I'm just saying. Because it's not needed all the time. We're not right. there we frequently. Could, we could, you know, I mean, if you're in a permanent structure, you have to be outside. Yeah. But if temporary, you could move it so, in and out, yeah. fire it up when you need it. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me put that on the drawing board and see what kind of information. Because carpentry right. had one. Do we own that or is that? I got to imagine carpentry has yeah, some bought more than they need. Okay. I just wanted to be. I have to think about the Department of Ed. Well, that and that's I don't know how much I can Anytime say about that. Anytime we cross that threshold, of making that sort of a, a learning environment, yeah, we're opening ourselves up to a, a lot. Uh, right now, it's a glorified storage shed. Uh, that's my only concern. I, I, I yeah. well, share right. I, and I gotta say that it, it's they're not here every day. We got we get a business to run here. We get eleven million dollar business for running here. Uh, that, we, that, we, that we answer to the Department of Ed. No, I understand that. But uh, uh, anytime people drag their feet in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which gets done every day, that things nobody reacts. And the thing is that we gotta take care of number one here, fix a problem, and then deal with them afterwards. But uh, I'm not here to stir the pot, but I'm here to fix the problem. And, but, but let's keep that on top of the, the list to help you out. Well, I mean, if it's just electricity enough to like light the building, operate a few things that would still keep us in line with what we it's can do legally, it would be it's helpful. Covered. And a generator would, yeah, solve that issue. Might be the easier thing at the moment. Um, but it's basically, because we have one. Carpentry uses so. Thanks. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Do it. Okay, adjourn.